Well, for decades, only crackpots and crazy people believed in UFOs. That's what I thought anyway. And then in recent years, it turns out that governments have been taking them seriously all along. Very seriously. Nick Pope is a journalist who has spent years researching UFOs for the British government. He says that UFOs aren't just real. They also frequently come close to crashing into commercial airliners, among other things. Nick Pope joins us tonight. Nick, thank you very much for coming on. Um, so it's really not a question of do governments believe USOs, UFOs are real. Yes, they do. The United States government does. The British government does. The question is do they have any idea what they are, where they're from? No, we don't. We keep an open mind on it. We don't rule anything uh, off, you know, take nothing off the table with this. Our point really is that whatever these things turn out to be, there is a serious defense, national security, and air safety issue here. Yes. Well, so that's and, kind of the nub we, of it, and that is the, that, that's where my interest comes from. So why aren't governments encouraging the population to, as they say about terrorism, if you see something, say something, report sightings to the government so we can make sense of this potential threat? Well, they should be, and that's what we certainly did at the Ministry of Defense for many years. We took it very seriously. Our own pilots were seeing these things. We were having radar operators track them. And we knew, again, through intelligence and through open source material, we knew that the Russians and the Chinese and others were working on this too. The problem was that just the pop culture baggage from the term UFO, flying saucer, little green men, people right. don't take it seriously, but they should. Um, okay, people have asked me uh, about, I call them vehicles, okay? Right. Now, I did not call them objects. That was too neuter for me. Okay. Um, and if you want to know about people kind of thing, um, there is the ship that picked up the Voyager uh, capsule um, at uh, Alameda uh, Naval Shipyard and they they have a picture there of um, I think I think it's uh, the Apollo flight that the bugs in uh, in Neil were on uh, but anyway there is one image there that shows black people getting off. That shows black people getting off. That shows black people getting off. So people with dark skin getting off. Not dark black. Black skin. Really black. Yeah. Not dark black. Black skin. Really black. Yeah. Not dark black. Black skin. Really black. Yeah. Were they tall? Yes. Very tall? Yeah. How tall? Do you know? Well, they got out the, uh, the doorway. I don't know how high that is, but... Well, what... Uh, safe, safe. Seven, seven feet would be probably a conservative estimate. Those people are the angels. They're up there. They know what you think. And before you can execute, they know it. These are the people from God. Okay, what is that? Holy crap. was Elijah Muhammad 55 years ago who started teaching us about a plane in the sky that was made like a wheel. He said his teacher, a man, Master Farad Muhammad pointed out to him a dreadful looking plane in the sky, a half a mile by a half a mile. Built like the universe itself, it's circular and it holds within it 1,500 little wheel-like planes. 
when we heard Elijah say these things, many of us believed. And some of us disbelieved. But Reagan, a classified, bona fide liar, and all of the liars that have surrounded Reagan and Carter and Ford and all of the presidents. Since 1930, they have known that this plane exists. But why won't they tell the American people? It is because the white man does not want to admit that there is a technology in the world and a power in the world that makes his power look like that jumbo jet in comparison to that huge plane. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He don't want to admit that he don't have what it takes to deal with that, what they call walnut-shaped object in the sky. <laughs> Elijah Muhammad said to us, that Ezekiel envisioned this. In the year 595 B.C. And it's recorded right there in your Bible. Ezekiel looked up. It was a vision. And he saw a wheel in the middle of the earth. It looked like a chariot of fire. A cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. This is what Ezekiel saw. And he said in the wheel there was eyes in the wheel. <laughs> You can check your fall, America. You still have a little time. But you can't check it with weapons. And you can't check it by attacking me and calling me a nut. Because before you can call me crazy, these wheels will be seen all over America. All over America. They're coming down over the major cities. So you won't be able to say it's swamp gas or little lights and people were drunk, they'll be down over Chicago. They'll be down over New York. You will look up one day and see them, and I don't want you to be terrified. They're your friends, black man. Not from outer space. Not from nobody on Mars or Jupiter or Uranus. They're planes flown by the original people. People whose wisdom is far superior to all the scientists of this world. We had a wisdom before the white man was a thought that was superior to his wisdom in its fullness. He's just a little baby. And that plane is a sign of that greater wisdom. They can't touch it. They can't knock it down. There's no rocket that you got that can reach it. Because there are those on that plane who like Jesus. If you read the scripture, Jesus knew his enemies thinking. Brilliant. He knew their plans, and when they were planning, Jesus would always be somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus, that power, oh. that power that Jesus had is on the wheel. And some of us are growing into that power even now as we speak. It's wonderful that God would choose a crazy, foolish people like us to manifest himself to the whole world who has been talking about God, longing for God, looking for God, hoping for God, and never believed and would, would believe that God would manifest himself among a dead and foolish people like we. All praise is due to Allah. You see, I'm backed up by a God. I'm not a preacher that don't have backup. And as you call for your backup, I'll call for my backup. And you don't want to meet my backup. <laughs>